Hi guys, let's talk Europe haul, shall we? Um, so I was in Europe for three weeks approximately, and I picked up a lot of fragrances. In fact, I had to buy two suitcases to bring back fragrances. So um, the thing is, I didn't really, I thought I bought a lot of stuff, but I didn't really end up buying too much because I picked up some stuff uh, along the way at uh, some of the uh, shows I went to but I've got a bunch of fragrances here that I purchased and that's all I'm featuring today in this European haul video find out what I bought coming right up thanks so much for tuning in this is Sebastian yes today we're talking about my European fragrance haul might be a candle here and a home spray as well but uh, there are some stuff I bought uh, I actually discovered some um, Actually, I discovered one new brand uh, in Paris, and uh, I was very intrigued. It was a Brazilian brand, so I bought a couple of things from there. But I just picked up some random stuff. There's some designer stuff here. There's um, stuff that you probably are very uh, familiar with. And then, of course, the Dior Privés that are no longer selling here in the States. I ended up buying three that I really wanted backups of. So I'll let you know what they are before I do. If this is your first time tuning into the channel and you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So let's get started. I'm going to talk about the Dior Privés first. So if you didn't catch my video on the new updated Eau Noir along with Cologne Blanche and... Um, the uh, Bois d'Argent, that is probably launched now that I'm doing this video because it was supposed to launch at the very end of June, early July, so most likely it's out now. But I ended up buying a bottle of Mitza. I'm not going to open it up, but um, I'll show you. Uh, this is a brand new bottle of Mitza. So uh, I went to the Dior boutique. It's actually a Dior Privé fragrances boutique on the Rue Saint-Honoré in uh, Paris. I went there and I didn't buy vetiver at the time. So I went back and they ran out of the vetiver. So vetiver seems to be very, very popular from this collection and there's a huge following for it. And so I found vetiver somewhere else along the way and I bought the last vetiver there. But when I was there, I bought Mitza and they had most every single fragrance there that is pulled from normal rotation or normal uh, stock. Like for example, if you go to Neiman Marcus here in San Francisco, you're not going to find vetiver, you're not going to find Mitza, you're not going to find Eau Noir, you won't find Leather Oud, Kirkenage, Mille La Forêt, Granville, and there's probably several other fragrances there that I'm missing. But I picked up Mitza there and I picked up Eau Noir as well. I picked up Eau Noir from another location where that location didn't even have uh, Mitza and vetiver. So it's kind of random. If you go to one of those stores that's selling these fragrances get it because like I said I went back the next day to buy Mitza and vetiver at the same time the lady goes no it's already gone I'm like shit can you get another somewhere and so no we couldn't get another so I on my travels I, I was able to find a Dior boutique uh, I think it was in Lyon uh, one of the departments, not the department, actually, actually in a in a mall, in a shopping mall, there was a standalone Dior uh, fragrances uh, boutique, and that's where I found my copy or, or my bottle of vetiver. So I would advise you if you're looking for these. Um, discontinued fragrances or very limited offerings if you find it get it because they will sell out but a little word on vetiver vetiver i've spoken a lot about if you don't know it you can catch my videos about them they seem to smell fine the only one that actually didn't smell correct to me seemed very thin was leather oud i smelled leather oud uh, in passing at one of the stores i can't remember which leather oud seems like it's gotten so watered down uh, unless my nose was acting up at the time uh, everything seemed correct like it smelled very close to the original the ones that I got here on Noir, Mitza and Vetiver but Leather Oud seemed like it was just watered down I don't know what the deal is but Vetiver does have the kind of civity kind of notes so that's that um, let me know if you've traveled to France in Paris and you've picked up some of these fragrances and it's not just limited to Paris I like as I said I I saw these fragrances in Lyon in a department store, not a department store, like a mall, and in, in a standalone Dior fragrances uh, boutique, which was all by itself, not connected to a department store, which was kind of unique to do that. And of course, the one in Paris on the Rue Saint-Honoré is also a standalone uh, 
store, but I think they focus mostly on Dior Privé. And the one in Lyon, I wasn't sure if they had every other uh, Dior fragrance as well. So that's those. Let's move on to L'Occitane. I haven't bought a L'Occitane fragrance in a long time, so I ended up... I, I was in a, a city called Annecy in uh, France and uh, along the, the little canal there, there was a L'Occitane store and I walked in to kind of like cool off because it was so hot. I ended up buying L'Occitane pour homme or I think it's just called homme, this one right here. So this particular fragrance, I don't know if you know, um, is a 75 ml. It was about 50 euros and you know we get tax back from uh, buying uh, fragrances there. So this to me seems like a very masculine peppery kind of a fragrance so it has that kind of smell to it and I was a big fan of L'Occitane in the early 2000s. I've stopped buying things and recently I fe featured their uh, Ombre Saint Santal in a discontinued fragrances video and also their Vetiver. I also bought Eau de Bay Everybody talks about this one, so I wanted to have it. Uh, this is a kind of a warm, spicy fragrance. Let me spray this one on. Yeah, I can smell it. To me, it seems like it's got some spice and some tonka, maybe. It's quite nice. These were about uh, 55 euros, I believe, and there was some kind of a promo. And then I bought Vervain, Verbena. I've worn Verbena before. I haven't worn those two fragrances, although I know a lot about them. The Verbena also came with a lotion, which I've misplaced, and it also came with a shower gel. So it was kind of like a nice promotional price, but I don't speak much about L'Occitane. And the Vervain also, or the Verbena, was a great fragrance to spray on after a long day of walking around the city of Annecy and, you know, doing that kind of a lake ride, boat ride on the on the lake there. So this is a very refreshing um, scent, and I've kind of been digging Verbena fragrances lately, and I'm looking for more. So that's one of the reasons why I bought this particular fragrance. So are you a fan of uh, fragrances from L'Occitane? Let me know. I know they do some great fragrances and they're also not necessarily very, very expensive. So uh, it's, get to, it's nice to kind of, you know, circle back to that brand and see what they have. Although these are not new fragrances, I didn't see much in the variety of new fragrances, but definitely like some old staples to kind of, uh, you know, uh, circle back to and appreciate. But let me know if you're a fan of L'Occitane's fragrances and what are your favorite uh, L'Occitane fragrances. Now, this Brazilian brand that I discovered, um, there's a store, a, a street off of the Rue Saint Honoré, if you're in Paris. Uh, this big store, um, and I think it's called Parfumaria Fibo. This is the, uh, these are the two fragrances I bought from this brand. I didn't know anything about it, but that store was really, really amazing. I really loved the way the store looked. So I walked in, plus it was raining, so I kind of escaped uh, the rain. Because while I was in France, it rained both in Paris and also in Lyon, not in Annecy. Uh, and also, it didn't rain in Italy whatsoever. And Italy was like super, super freaking hot. It was just extremely humid. Um, but I, I went through some of their fragrances. One of the fragrances, this one called Odor de Rosas, this one right here. I really loved this concept and this kind of like uh, classic or vintage looking idea uh, and I bought that. So to me this, uh, let's see if it's going to, okay there it goes. So to me this fragrance seems like a smoked rose. Now I've sm spoken about smoked rose uh, in fragrances, but this to me is like literally charred roses. Very, very smoky. It's a little animalic, it's strong, but it is an eau de cologne, but I think it's got really good legs. It's got longevity and it was very, very unique for me. And I don't really know a lot about Brazilian brands except for Oboticario. So I was very, very curious about this brand and also the fact that their store was amazing looking. If you ever get a chance to go in, the, uh, to one of their stores, especially if you're in Paris, do. Because uh, they had various collections of fragrances and uh, this one really, really intrigued me, so I ended up buying a bottle. And this was also very inexpensive. It was around 40 euros, I believe, for 100 ml. Uh, plus it has a kind of vintage, uh, kind of pharmaceutical kind of looking uh, design work. So I instantly gravitated towards that particular fragrance. But as I was saying, they have tons of different fragrances plus skincare or lotions and things like that. And then this is the other one I bought, Ola Omate. So I went through this whole collection of fragrances. There were some fun fragrances there. 
And this particular one intrigued me as far as the smell goes. Uh, Ola, Olha Omate, Olha Ol, something like that. It's Olha Omate is what it, what it is. Um, this one was fun. I really love this one. Look at the, the bottle right there. Um, this one seemed like a very playful fragrance. I'm going to spray this one on. Yeah, something about this one, mate obviously is a, you know, kind of a tea-like drink. I think they drink mate in Argentina. I don't know if they do in Brazil. Maybe they do. I can't remember. But this one, when I wore it, it had such a great dry down. I wore it and left the store. Well, actually, I, I wore it in the store, and that's why I went with this one. But there were a couple of others that I should have probably picked up because they smelled great, and they were more cocktail-y, kind of playful and fizzy kind of things. But I don't know if you guys know this one. I, I really fell in love with this particular fragrance. So I ended up with it. Olha Omate from uh, Perfumaria Fibo. Are you familiar with this brand? It's a Brazilian brand. Let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. So I walked into the Ex Nihilo boutique right on the Rue Saint Honoré in Paris. And I found out that they have a, um, a limited edition fragrance. Limited edition. It says it's called Lost in Paradise Riviera Limited Edition. So I bought it, although I didn't buy it from their boutique because I was thinking about it. I sprayed it on and I was walking with it and I got some samples. But I ended up at the, at the Samaritain uh, store, or the new uh, department store that reopened, uh, that's owned by LVMH. And I saw it there and I, I bought it there because uh, I really fell in love with it. It's tropical, it's a bit floral, and I like the idea of it. And I always love limited edition fragrances because they do it for a little bit and then they kind of, uh, you know, don't uh, don't release it or like it's out of stock or, or discontinued not discontinued just because there's no stock left so I like the idea of this particular fragrance and um, Let me show you any fans of ex nihilo. Let me know put a comment on not not much talk about this particular house um, Yeah, I do have to be honest their fragrances are a bit on the pricey side uh, So this is the bottle So this is very very tropical, but also fresh and I don't know the notes, and I can't remember it now. It's been about two and a half weeks since I, maybe three weeks since I sampled it last. Do I spray this? Let me, let's spray this. Oh yes. Now there's a little bit of a salty marine thing here, but it's just like a bouquet of tropical flowers. Very, very fresh. Really, really wonderful. Really fell in love with it. And I like this bottle. Um, it's got this on top. I like that little logo. Let's see. There. Really love that logo. Um, I guess it stands for Riviera. There's a Riviera right down here. But let me know if you're a fan of this house, Ex Nihilo. It doesn't get much hype and definitely worth looking into. And on one of my trips back in 2015, I believe, or 2016, I was there uh, in Paris in around December and they had just opened the store for the first time because the previous year that store wasn't there. And I've wanted to dig deep deeper into this house and never have. So now I have my third fragrance. I have Viper Green and I have another fragrance from the house. But I want to explore the house a little further. But this particular fragrance is really, really nice nice. I, I, I can't wait to wear it. So a couple of fragrances from the house of uh, Guerlain. One I opened, one I haven't. I fell in love with Neurolia Vetiver from the Aqua Allegoria fragrances uh, collection. Uh, the Aqua Allegoria collection of fragrances are fresh, although I just found out they're coming out with, what are they, intense or extreme versions or forte versions of some of their fragrances. And one of them is the Rose. I don't have the rose one. And then the other one is the um, Mandarin Basilique, which is one of my favorite fragrances from this collection. So they're coming out with a forte version of those fragrances. But this is a brand new fragrance, Neurolia Vetiver. So I like the idea of Neroli and I love Vetiver as well. The two together, you know, a balance of feminine and masculine together. So I like this idea of this kind of like a citrus floral blended or meshed with, you know, this kind of earthy, woody, grassy Vetiver experience. This is really, really nice. I really dug it and that's why I bought it. And it's probably selling here in the States now. At least I think it is. Let me know. Maybe it's not, uh, but I think it's come here already. So on the Rue Saint Honoré, there is a big Guerlain boutique. 
just steps away from the Louis Vuitton boutique. So if you ever go to Paris, go to the Rue Saint Honoré because it's so close to lots of different perfume shops. Javoy is also around the corner. Um, so lots of different um, perfuming going on in that little neighborhood. Uh, L'Artisan also has a perfume shop. It used to be Penhaligans, but I think Penhaligans is no longer there and they've replaced it with L'Artisan. But I bought Habi Rouge Linstinct. Uh, so I don't know what you guys think about this one, if you've sampled it or not, but I wasn't too impressed when I smelled it in store. I did buy it because I wanted it and obviously it comes in the new bottle uh, that looks like um, the uh, Lo Medial collection. Here it is. So Happy Rouge Linstinct, what do you guys think of the bottle? What do you guys think of this changeover to uh, bottles that look like the um, the uh, Lo Medial collection bottles. Uh, do you guys like the idea? So, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't too impressed, but let's try it once more on camera. Let's see if I like it. I'm a fan of uh, Habi Rouge, and when I found out about this, I was excited. This is created by Delphine Jelk, from what I remember. I think it is. So, to me, it doesn't smell anything like Habi Rouge, at least from smelling it on a strip. I'm not, I haven't worn it yet. There's kind of like a menthol, kind of um, like an aromatic kind of thing, a spice, but eventually it's warming up, and potentially when this thing warms up, it might remind me more of Habi Rouge. But to me, this doesn't smell anything like the Habi Rouge EDT or EDP. I'm not, I'm not 100% certain about it. Let me wear it a little bit and come back for, to you guys and I'll do a review. But what are your thoughts about uh, Habi Rouge Linstinct from the House of Guerlain? And what do you think about the bottle? Do you like it? All right, so I didn't, like I said, I didn't buy too much, but there's a couple more fragrances. I already did a video on these two fragrances. Caron, uh, Pour un homme de Caron Le Matin, Peron de what am I saying? Poranom de Caron Le Soir. So two different versions of a Caron Poranom de Caron. Uh, the morning version or daytime version and then the nighttime version. Go catch my review of it. And, and, and in the review, I did a blind thing, uh, so I hadn't worn them yet because I got to go to Printemps in Paris, which is also close by where all the department stores are. On the first floor upstairs, there's all the fragrances and there's a Caron department there. And I met with a friend and we were mostly focusing on the, the higher end of Caron fragrances, especially the Tabac fragrances, really great Tabac fragrances. And there's three different uh, kinds of tabac. There's tabac blonde, tabac exquis, exquis I think, and another one I'm dr drawing a blank. I, I posted about it on Instagram. Those three fragrances were amazing. I want to get those fragrances, but I wanted to get these, so I picked these up, and of course there's a video on them. I really like the dark, uh, or the soir, the nighttime one. Uh, Le Matin is okay. Uh, I, I have fragrances like that, so uh, I don't really uh, need another one, but obviously I bought uh, both of those. So in Italy, I didn't do much perfume shopping in Italy. Uh, one thing I do want to say, I looked for YSL's Baby Cat, and Baby Cat was completely sold out. I went to um, uh, two stores, in Printemps, the same store where I bought the, uh, the Caron Paranum, the Caron fragrances. They were out of stock, or sold out none. Uh, the associate told me to go to uh, another department store, but I didn't have time because it was on the other side of um, the river, um, so I couldn't. He also said that it was more expensive on that other side because there's more wealthy people there or something like that. Um, and also I checked in Milan at the La Rinascente for the baby cat. It was sold out there as well. So baby cat, you know, it smelled nice. I, did, I wasn't wowed by it. Uh, it smelled like a kind of a spicy peppery uh, leather suede leather, kind of buttery smooth, but I want to wear it because it didn't like wow me right there. So anyway, uh, I didn't pick that one up. Well, most likely it'll come here and then I'll pick it up here. But what I did buy is Ferragamo's Intense Leather and then also Ferragamo's Bright Leather. I did buy these two in Turin, the La, La Rina um, The The Intense Leather is already selling here. Uh, and uh, I never smelled it or bought it here, but I don't think the bright leather is here yet. Uh, I'll go to the bright leather first. The bright leather to me 
reminds me, it's a fresh take on the leather. The bright leather, obviously, it's bright. To me, it smells a bit like there's like a pulpy ozonic violet leaves note in here, but I read the notes. It doesn't say that there is. So there's definitely something pulpy or succulent in here, fresh and spicy at the same time with kind of an undertone of leather. It's really nice. It's a leather you can totally wear in the summertime. Uh, and I like that kind of whole pulpiness of the, like there's like an ozonic touch, a fresh ozonic crispness like apples, a ozonic apple kind of a note. I really liked it. Again, it reminds me of some other fragrances that I've smelled before, but not with the leather dry down. And I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Ferragamo to begin with, but I kind of like that one. I think that would be perfect to wear in the heat. Um, especially since it kind of has this kind of like apple-y crispness, like green apple-y uh, touch. But let's go back to the original Intense Leather. You know, I like the Intense Leather. I didn't love it. It's a dark take on leather. You know, you know, I, I don't hate it. I, I, I kind of like this one. I haven't worn it. I just wanted to buy it to, to experience it. Look, it, the box has gotten all uh, smudged and um, uh, bent up uh, traveling back from... Uh, Europe. But yeah, I, I like this one. It kind of lightly under there kind of has a like a ombre leather kind of an experience. But this to me seems like it's a lot easier to wear than ombre leather, which is a lot darker. So I'm going to have to put them to use and I think they're pretty solid. Both of them are pretty solid. And I haven't really spoken too much about Salvatore Ferragamo fragrances. I'm kind of curious about them all of a sudden. So we'll see. Maybe we'll do a video on those two and compare the two pretty soon. And the last bunch of fragrances, I went to the Orza El Legrand. No, there's one more fragrance before I go to the Orza El Legrand. This is Blue Noir Parfum from the house of uh, Narciso Rodriguez. I smelled it at the Printem Boutique, instantly fell in love with it because it reminded me of Dior Homme, uh, kind of a DNA. But first, when you first spray this one, it's definitely Blue Noir DNA, but it changed. It started smelling like Dior Homme, Dior Homme Parfum. It was so, so sexy. So I instantly had to buy a bottle of this stuff. Really, really amazing. I've been waiting for this one for a lot, a uh, long time. It hasn't really launched here. And the thing is, it seems that in Italy especially, there's definitely like big sections for Narciso Rodriguez fragrances. And I don't find these in department stores here in the States anymore. So maybe it's more of appreciated in Europe, even though Narciso Rodriguez is a, a, an American brand. So it's the Parfum version, Blue Noir Parfum. So have you guys sampled this one yet? Because it's freaking amazing. I really loved it. Um, especially since it has this kind of irisy kind of thing happening with it. Uh, but initial blast definitely reminds me of the original fragrance. And then it just develops and Iris kind of takes over, kind of like a very sexy, lipsticky, lightly leathery Iris thing. Really, really nice. I really love this one. Um, any fans of this one? Any fans of this series? Let me know. Um, I'd like to find out. But if you haven't gotten your nose on this one, definitely do. Because it really does smell great. Uh, and the reminder of Dior Homme is kind of cool. I think this is created by Sonia Constant as well. Um, I like her fragrances. Um, yeah, I think she does a pretty good job. She has her own line as well. I think it's called Ella K. All right, now on to the Orza El Grand fragrances. So I went to their boutique and I posted a, a reel, a, a, an Instagram reel there from there. If you haven't caught that, go catch it. Uh, I don't know if you're a fan of Orza El Grand. Uh, I unfortunately had to throw away my box for Sheep Remousse. As you can see, I had to buy another one. And I noticed that the color of this juice is so different than the color of the original because I have a little bit of the my previous bottle left. This is like a totally different. Have they reformulated the fragrance? I don't know, but it smells the same. But I got rid of the box for this because uh, I just didn't have room. Uh, I had to get rid of some boxes. And this one I opened up. But if you don't know Sheep Remousse, Sheep Remousse is um, a very unique, earthy smelling, kind of mushroomy smelling sheep fragrance with lots of aromatics and greens and soil tincture and things like that. It does smell like mushrooms, but it also smells like a sheep so it's got a lot of oak moss in it as well. Really wonderful fragrance. Sheep Remousse. And and then the other one I bought is Relique D'Amour, this one right here. It comes in boxes like this. Their store is amazing. If you ever go to Paris, uh, it's pretty close to the um, uh, Opera Garnier. So definitely go there uh, to, uh, you know, sample their fragrances and see their store. So Relique D'Amour, I think, 
I can't remember what it was. Was it an incense? Uh, now I forgot, but I really fell in love with it and I had to buy a bottle. I now have probably about seven of their fragrances. Let's try this. It, it, it kind of has a little bit of a violet thing happening with it, but it has rose maybe, maybe a little incense, but it smelled fantastic and it was warm and I smelled it there and I was like, you know what, I gotta get it. Um, really a, kind of a fresh incense, I believe, because it it's got a kind of a religious kind of a theme to it right there on the cover. Great packaging, sadly I had to throw away my box for uh, sheep or moose, but um, on top of that, I ended up with a candle, candle in here from there. I bought this candle and then last but not least, I also bought a little uh, room spray called Feu de Bois. I don't know if it, uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Diptyque's Feu de Bois, uh, but it's a little smokier, I think. A little different, uh, definitely smells of burned uh, wood. So that would be perfect for usage in a bathroom or something. And that's the haul for you guys. Uh, that's all I bought. I should have bought more, but I was being very conservative because I knew I was gonna pick up fragrances in the, uh, from Exxon's. Uh, and so I, um, I kind of was conservative, uh, conservative with my purchasing because I can get most everything here from Selfridges and Harrods. They ship, and of course I also order, buy things from Javoy. Um, their shipping is 45 bucks and they ship worldwide. So. Uh, having access to these three uh, entities to buy fragrances, I have access to everything pretty much, along with Lucky Scent and you know department stores here, uh, of course, a ZGO and then Tiger Lily Perfumery as well. So that's pretty much it for my haul video. Stay tuned for my Exxon's videos very soon. I hope to launch those soon, but let me know what your thoughts are on these fragrances. Are you a fan of these fragrances? I'd like to find out. Put a comment down. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.